you can see we've got an array. We're going to throw an exception. We've got an array, and we change this to do, and we're going to put three things into an array that only has two spots. This code is going to throw an exception. And, you know, naturally, when we run this code, we're going to get a stack trace, and it's going to tell us exactly where the error happened. However, it's not going to give us very much insight into actually what happened, and we're not going to be able to get into the code because the code is already completed. IntelliJ offers you the ability to set exception breakpoints. So here we, we can see it ran, it tells us exactly where the error happened, but let's see if we can debug this code without actually having a step through to where the exception breakpoint happened. So to set an exception breakpoint, click down here on the debug tab, click view breakpoints right there, exception breakpoints, add a new exception breakpoint, and we're going to just look, we're going to stop on any runtime exception. Runtime exceptions are exceptions that happen, and you're not really expecting them to happen. And this is good, except this is going to catch any exception that happens. So, perhaps exceptions that get thrown within library classes like Spring, it's going to pick up on those as well, and we don't want that. So we can set a class filter and say, hey, I only want to stop on exceptions within my own code base. And we're going to put that star right there to indicate any piece of code that is in com.mikemany. Any piece of code that's in that has that has that package structure, let's stop on this breakpoint. Okay, great. Click OK. Close. Now, if we remove that breakpoint, we have no breakpoint set in our class except for our exception breakpoint. We can hit debug. And right away, our application stops. And we know it's an exception breakpoint because it's got this little lightning sign right on, on it. And if we hover over it, we can see exception occurred, Java array, out of bounds. And now we can look at all of the variables in real time before the exception, right after the exception happened.